We're here today, Dare to Be, Christopher D'Angelo. This is my guy. Thank you for coming today. Appreciate Thank you. you. you Appreciate you, time. man. I love you. This is it. No, this is it. This is what we do. This is what we do. Man, I know. Thanks for do. coming to my, my place of where I live. Sorry Absolutely. it smells like my dinner last night. I made a little curry action. It's and all so good. But stay I'm, cooking, you I know I do. I do stay cooking. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is a brand new series, and as these videos have evolved, as I was mentioning to you, everything kind of for me like comes back to oh, what song are we going to put to that? Mm -hmm. Like whether it's we're editing videos or we're you know posting on social, and what what song are we going to just put in the background a little bit? Yeah. And then my job for the Bucks, right? Like I'm live soundtracking basketball terms like I'm reading and reacting and I'm trying to add value to that and so I'm always wondering when I see people if I see people with headphones on with earbuds in when Giannis is warming up mm -hmm. like people are walking on the street I want to know what people are listening to right. that then evolved into I want to know what people are soundtracking their day to their moments that matter when they're getting ready on a regular day when they're getting ready for a big event a big meeting whatever so on and so forth and you were the first person we had to have for this conversation Thank because you. when i think of music and movement and life and joy and positivity all those things that i try to embody it's like right no no brainer i'm a reflection of you so I no it goes, full circle. It. it goes full circle thank you yes so i don't even know where to start because i I want to talk about music like so much with you, Yeah. but actually I do know where I want to start. Yeah, okay. okay. So I got something I want to ask you about. So Jose, we're going to, I want to show this picture and I'm not going to show Christopher this picture yet, but I'm going to ask him how he feels when I show him this picture and what song is playing. Are you ready for this? <laughs> do you know what's on this phone? I don't know. Do you have I, no idea? But I just feel like it's, it's going to be great. It is going to be gonna great. Be solid. What do you feel when I wow. show you this? <laughs> <laughs> wow uh, that's the, literally the first song is a party in my tummy i love it that's literally like there's so much music that has been produced on that show yeah uh and it's that's like when i was doing a tv show and touring with them that was the one song that had the kids the most lit yep <laughs> That's literally what, like, like, you know, when kids are like hyped up on candy yeah. and just like going crazy like that, that's a song. But also like you're providing something that's like saying, hey, let's eat better. Let's be better mm. as people for kids. So it's like trap. Imagine a trap beat. Yeah, yeah. Like modern day yeah. feel. So it's like the parents that listen to, to hip hop or rap. And then, like I said, also giving the kids the message, which is always cool. I'm always been I'm a movement person. Yeah. So it's all about how are we moving people to move better or feel better about themselves or be the best versions of themselves. So then when you're like, oh, you need to digest more carrots and put these, you know, asparagus or whatever, like all this this uh, stuff that most kids might pass on. Some kids do, but maybe a majority don't. Yeah. It's a way to like bring them in. They're like, oh, this beat kind of, okay, it's moving a little bit. Let me eat a little bit better right. now, right? Because they're talking about this. So it's this constant reminder that like, yeah, let's be better as, as people and eat better because you'll feel better. Yeah. Yeah. So no. Yeah. yeah. That's the. That's that's definitely the first song. That but I your remember. career started way before that. Like this yeah, is just absolutely. one of my favorite like things that I know mm -hmm. about you that I like to share because I'm so proud of you. Like I, I'm never knocking it. Right. I hope you know that. No. Like, no, 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 like no, no, okay, because yeah. it's genuine and it's something that like again it's like so do you know Chris was on uh, so you think you can dance like do you know all these things about him that then that I feel privy to know these chapters of your life and then and why you're here right now. So I, so this helps me think about then the questions I want to ask. When, do you remember the first time you started to dance? Just danced? Uh, my mom. Yeah? Got her masters from UWM in dance, taught in NPS for 20 plus years. Yeah. You talk about old school veteran, go in early, leave late, let kids stay at our house if they had nowhere to go. Uh, so you, when you talk about the understanding or just a visual understanding of what it means to be the ultimate teacher, educator, but also like caregiver beyond the books. Yeah. That is like, she is the epitome of that. So I look at that. So growing up, I'm the youngest of three. Mm -hmm. uh, we, didn't do, we didn't do babysitters. I was like always with her mm -hmm. or my sister or my grandma. Those are the trifecta, the three women in my life. Yeah. Uh, so it goes full circle. But when I would be with my mom, I'd go to the studio, mm. sitting in my little like rocker yeah. or a chair, watching people move, being fascinated by it, but not knowing yeah. what it was. But then when I came to understand what it was, I was like, oh, this is like, it speaks to you. Yeah. You know, like like the unheard language 
Uh, and I thought that was always powerful to be able to like translate or tell a story without uh, using words. Yeah. I was kind of like socially awkward growing up. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like I like didn't feel as if I had a voice. And I was like, oh, but now this gives me a voice, which has led me to be in the space I'm in now where it's like I said, I'm like, how do you move people to move better mm. throughout their lives? And the best way I describe it now is like I'm a motivational mover. Yeah. So, you know, it's like and that's literally what I saw my mom do, motivating, motivating people through movement um, to view themselves in a different light, to like amplify who they are as people. Yeah. And then taking that and then now distributing that out into the world. Because once you find your voice, then you can go pretty much anywhere. The range is, you know, curry range. Yeah. You, it doesn't matter, right? You can go as crazy like as you that. want or you can go as crazy as... DJ Shauna, <laughs> like you know, like there to understand and see someone's evolution like this is crazy. I'm gonna look at the camera. It's crazy to understand that you could take this much and turn it into literally limitless, whatever that you want. Speaks volumes about someone's movement, understanding of self, and just being true to who they are, mm. which is you. Thank um, you. So yeah, my mom is is the key, like pivotal point behind all of that because yeah. it was just like. That exposure. Yeah. Right. Like she could have been like, oh, go off and be somewhere else. Or mm -hmm. like I said, put me with a babysitter. But it was like, no, nah, there's, I want you to be in this space of what I'm creating, this greatness. Yeah. And so, um, well, yeah. and spend time with you, if I may yeah, jump yeah. in. Yep. My, so I'm going to, I feel like this could be a whole nother conversation talking mm -hmm. about our moms. Yep, um, yep. <laughs> but my mom and I talk about that a lot about we grew up in that time before it was like cool to bring your kids everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Like it was, I was going to city hall with my mom, mm -hmm. you know, Justin, my brother and I were doing lit drops with her mm -hmm. like on the weekends because yep. we didn't have babysitters. Like you said, like it was family. Yep. So I have my trifecta too, you yep. know, between my parents and my great grandma and my Nana, like mm -hmm. I have all these people who it takes a village. And so I think yeah. we're so lucky to have that. Our moms have like taken that and like we got to spend time with them like, yeah, they might have been working, but we got to be a part of their world yep. in something magnificent they both were building. Yep. Right? But without even knowing, it was just like, right. you know, like. That's my mom. Well, right, 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 <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And like, and most parents, I feel like, wouldn't take their kids mm. to those, bring them into those kind of spaces on a consistent basis. That was all that I needed to know. But also, it was, it was like, yeah, dance was like what I was intrigued by and what brought me in and was just like, I want to keep coming back. But it was like the culture of, building up individuality yeah you know through like people that. you know what i mean and yeah. that that was like a that's what really shaped me and my perspective on investing into people yeah. you know more than just doing steps and only teaching a two-step because i'm like a two-step can only go so far but yeah. with the right mindset and the right heart you can go anywhere yeah with that that's forever so that is what i really took away from my mom like dance was the platform and it was like an extension of her but it was like the story of like how much life can be better when everybody around you is great. Yeah. 